fellas, it's time to come clean. We have not run a lot of six-man man pressures in a long time. And we used to be a huge six-man man pressure team. And the reason we haven't done it is because I haven't had those type of corners in a while. Okay? I didn't have them in the last three years of Milford. I had some good zone coverage kids. And they were very good football players. And when I went to Notre Dame, I haven't had those type of corners. I've had good zone coverage kids. Kids will play discipline, play hard. That's not a knock on my kids, okay? What that is, as a coach, you gotta figure out how to have your kids have the most success and put them in the spot to use them. And if you don't have great man coverage kids, you can't put them out there on an island. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you, I believe this. You know, I'm a big, if I could play man pressure and bring it like Buddy Ryan did back in the day, I would, okay? I have people I know that are my friends that we've played that have lined up and brought pressure and played man coverage on every snap. We played one of those teams this year. And four times our ex beat their corner on a takeoff route. And yeah, it was a pretty close, it was a very close game except for the fact that they brought pressure on every play. And when they did that, our our ex was three inches taller and a better athlete than their corner. And the thing is, the corner is a solid football player. He's just not a man coverage kid. And I'm not, I'm not going to be that stubborn where I'm going to say, this is how we're going to play, even if it gets my tail beat. I'm going to use the tools I have in my toolbox and taper my defensive package to always let my kids play to their potential. Sometimes we'll bring more pressure. Sometimes it'll be zone pressure. Sometimes it'll be man pressure. But I'm going to share with you. We're going to look different on defense this year because I got really good cover kids. My wolf this year is an excellent cover player, and he's physical. My bear is a really good cover kid, and he's physical. My corners, and I have four of them that can flat play, are really good. My free safety is a really good coverage kid. And I got a kid who's not even in the depth chart that was an all-state corner as a sophomore who plays quarterback for us if I need him. So what I'm telling you is we're getting back into the man pressure business. And we're going to start shooting more bullets at people and see if we can knock some people out before the game's the first quarter's over. I love playing that way. Uh, it's going to be a return to the mid-2000s pressure-wise because I think we have the kids to do it. If I'm wrong, we'll play more zone. But I can see us getting into the six-man pressure concept. And when I talk about pressure, I think there's some things. I'm going to give you some ideas that I think are good in any defense. Okay, And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about when to use pressure and how coverages are associated with it and how we attack scheme. The first thing is this. You can pressure through alignment. You can pressure through alignment. Give your kids the freedom to move. But don't ever let them give up their technique for a disguise. We want to create discomfort with the offense with very little change in our defense. We want to create offensive indecision. And we want to put the game in the quarterback's hands. You know, Johnny Swettervest sits over there. And, you know, he, and the offensive coordinators, you know, you've heard me talk about this. They're like face guys. You know what I mean? They're all geniuses. They're all like six foot one, 165 pounds, scruffily shavy sort of, okay? They wear the pretty sweater vest and the matching visors, okay? That guy's over there scanning your defense, trying to figure out what you're doing. The reason we've been in strike the pose and showing our zone coverage is we've played more of that, okay? I haven't been pressuring by alignment because we haven't been playing a lot of press man. Now, I can line up and press man and then go play coverage now, and I can put a little bit of wrinkle in Johnny's sweater vest brand new shirt. And that's what I want to do as he's scanning my defense. We can play press 51. In press 51, our corners show press. Our wolf shows press. This is their normal alignment in 51. We take our linebackers, we walk the mics and the backer into their gaps. We take the free safety, we put them at six yards. We put the spur 
just inside eye of number two, and we press with the corner. All right? Just prior to snap, my corner and my free will wiggle back, and my spur will wiggle for width. But not early. Don't give it away. But if we do that, we are pressing by alignment. Okay? When you call a blitz, there's some things you got to know, man. What's the down and distance? What's a good blitz call and down and distance? What's a good blitz call versus their personnel group? What's the field position? What's that say to my pressure chart? Well, how many minutes are left in the game? Okay. What's the momentum of a game? Here's my one. It just bothers me to no end. Okay. There are some times in a game where you don't know if you're going to try to run the clock out or if you're going to try to knock their ass out. Okay, and the most uncomfortable games are those games where it's like 18 points or 12 points and you have a lead and you're not sure, do I, do I go after them with a man pressure and maybe give up the big play or do I play zone pressure or I run zone pressures or do I play coverage? You know, that's hard. You make a, you make a mistake. You can let them back into the game either way. We got in a game like that this year. It was so frustrating. Okay, momentum of the game. You know when a bad time to blitz is? After you give up a turnover, everybody, oh, give up a turnover. They're going to take the shot. I'm going to go. Yeah, you know what happens? It's like getting hit in the, you know, the, 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 the gonads. You get hit in the gonads and you turn over the ball. You feel that way. Your kids are a little slower on the blitz. Your coverage is not as good, as good. You can give up the big play. I've used a pressure chart throughout my career. And basically, this is what my pressure chart looks like. Some of you guys have seen this before. Okay? Well, my opponent has the ball backed up to his own 10-yard line. Okay? I only use his own pressure. I might show pressure in alignment and get the hell out of there, but I only run zone pressures only a little bit. Okay? Like I got 90 yards of field to defend. Okay? When my opponent's as, at his own 10 to his own 40, Okay, I pressure, and it's been moved a little bit. I pressure about 30% of the time, and it's mostly zone pressures. Okay, when they're on their own 40 to our 25-yard line, I'm pressuring about 55% of the time. Okay. I don't play a lot of zone pressures in the red zone. We have from time to time but only when I'm trying to bait someone. We're pressuring about 45, 60% of the time. Few of them are man, okay, or few of them are zone. We have not played enough man pressures, okay? Remember, we got a mixed coverage. We got a mixed coverage. I've talked about this in other presentations. Too much of the same things give people problems. We've been, or, or give, give you problems. We've done too much zone pressures, not enough man pressures, all right? The other thing is this. When you blitz, why do you blitz? I'm pissed off. I'm angry. My wife says she likes it. I don't know. When we blitz, we try to attack scheme. And you know, in the old days, we saw a lot of scheme that were leads. And when we attacked lead schemes, like run schemes, we'd want to change the direction of the ball radically. Like if people we used to run stretch on us, we'd run a lot of cycle and spill the ball. Force at the mounds. Against gap run schemes, we used to run a lot of crossing stunts, A's and B's, from depth, from depth. And you know what? We spend a lot of time now attacking passing schemes. Are they a gap scheme? Are they a slide scheme? You want to attack the scheme at its weakest point, okay? In a gap scheme, the crease between the tackle and the lead block is always where it's weak. In slide protection, we always want to attack away from the slide of the center and attack the double read tailback. So here's a gap scheme. Okay, first of all, there's a weakness because this tailback is at this level. Okay, and this tackle is over here. So there's a natural crease because they're at different levels. The other thing is, you see this guy here? Princess doesn't like the block. Okay. And what we want to do is when we get, we get the scheme, this is like when we like to run that overload scheme. 
because we get a guy here and we get a guy here. And we're attacking their weakest link with one more. Okay? That's where we want to be. And slide protection, the center, we would assume, is a better blocker than the tailback. So we want to always attack. We want to find out where they're sliding and attack opposite that action. Okay? That's where we want to get. This kid is a tailback. He don't want to block anybody. Okay? That's the kid we want to win the matchups on. So let's talk about some six-man pressures. We use cutoff man. We did just like we talked about in the secondary drill. Girls, our hips are high, our feet are under our armpits, all right, our feet are under our armpits, our base is narrow, our hips are high, our back is flight, our eyes are on the belt buckle, our elbows are tight, hands up and relaxed. We use dividers. If the man is outside the nine-yard dividers, inside man. If he's inside the divider, outside leverage. If the quarterback has a weak arm, all right, we set the divider at 10 or 11 yards. We set it at like 11 yards right now, okay? Vertical movement, the more or alignment, the more athletic you are, the more athletic you are, the more, the more you can play off. If you're going to play off, man, you better be really good, like at four yards, okay? We have to always ID the receiver, okay? We have to ID the receiver, and we like to be one to two yards out. When the ball snapped, we like to play with hot feet. I want to keep my original leverage. They're going to give you all this hocus pocus and crap. Just buzz your feet. Don't attack them yet. Let them make their move. Okay, maintain your leverage. When they make your move, opposite hand jam. Put it right in their sternum. you got to get the contact. Do I want to punch? No, I want to stay in balance. I want to put my hand in their chest. <laughs> when my hand goes, my hip goes, and I cut them off. I cut them off, and I beat the receiver to the spot, and I flatten out his route. I stop the timing of the route, okay? Once the receiver's route's been flattened, we bring the jam down and we snug the route. When I mean bring the jam down, it goes from the hand to the thigh board, and we, 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 we um, squeeze them. If the receiver's hip to hip with me, pressure hasn't gotten home yet, don't panic. Don't panic. You're in phase. You're in great position. When you bring the hand down, squeeze that fly board. Feel the receiver's inside shoulder and keep your leverage. Mirror the move. When hips go down, yours hips go down. And compete for the ball, man. It's yours. You want to know a secret about playing corner? If you're a great corner, you get your beat too. Okay? And when you get beat off the line, you got to know how to recover. The first thing you got to understand is when you're beat, I'm going to work my tail to make it as close as I can because unless they throw a perfect pass, he's going to bring me back into phase. Okay? You're beat. The receiver's out of phase. You can see the back of his number. You start sprinting for that near hip and do not look back. And when he is running, you start attacking that far hand for that wrist click. You'll make the play unless it's perfect. Don't be obnoxious and run up his back. Don't do something stupid. Go for the ball. Go for the ball. Our man pressures. Okay? Fellas, I love Psycho. And against two by, two by two, we ran a ton of it. So here's the rules in Psycho. We are going to bring both perimeter guys. Okay? We're going to bring both perimeter guys. If there's a two-man surface, our line sparks inside. If there's a three-man surface, they play technique. Both my inside linebackers are in green dog, sprinting the coverage. The mic may widen. Okay, We call this where they play technique in, in um, cycle a stump. We call this a swipe. All right. If they come out and empty, if they come out and empty, my mic will come off the edge. My wolf will go into coverage, and my backer is in the lone green dog. Okay? If it's three by one, my mic will come off into the boundary and come. We will swipe. We will swipe two-man surfaces. We will swipe backers and green dog. 
So we're still getting the double edge stunt, but my backer now is in the green dog sprinting to coverage, and we are in man coverage. We are in press man. We play at different levels. All right, he's in press. He's at two and a half, and he's like at five and a half. All right? A cover one. All right? Now my mic and my back are coming. My mic and my back are coming. My two spurs are in green dog, and my free safety is man on the tight end. It is two by two, and this is one of the things I love. <clears throat> we haven't been able to do enough of this, but I love this. This was big for us in the early 2000s against spread teams. We would go and we would bring in pass situation the double A stunt. And we would take our ends and we would control all flares. <clears throat> we would be man here, man here, man here, and man here. Our free safety on the snap climbs into the box and plays man to man on the tailback. If the tailback blocks, my free safety is a low hole rat helping out on crossers. It's awesome. All right. Three by one, three by one. The free safety comes over and plays three, and the wolf becomes the low hole rat on crossers. B is exactly the same, except my backers, my backers in the A gap stunt, or excuse me, my backers in the A gap stunt, okay, and B, they're in the B gap stunt, and the tackles are in the A. Spurs are in green dog free safety as number number two. And double B against, against two by two, my spur, my corner, my wolf, and my corner are all, all in man. Free safety is man on the tailback. <clears throat> and he, if that tailback blocks, if he blocks, my free safety is a low hole rat. If they put him in there for a screen, my free safety should knock the living shit out of him, okay, before anything happens, okay? Three by one, the free safety is now over three, and the wolf is the low hole rat. We can run torpedo. We can run torpedo just like we did before, and we can bang it, all right? Our spurs against two back sets have the tailbacks in green dog. Free safety has two. Okay. If we run it against empty set, corner has man, wolf has man. Backer's coming off the edge. Bear has number two, corner has number one. Free safety has tailback. If tailback blocks, he's a low hole rat. Three by one, wolf becomes the low hole rat and free safety becomes the cover player on number three. Fellas, we did a lot of this stuff. It was really good. But the problem is we haven't had the corners to lock up and play man. I think we're going to do more of it because I really like my kids. Thank you very much.